Recording. All right. I'm talking to Mark Spinks from Gravel Sandwich. Mark, how's it being back in Queensland? Fantastic. Uh huh. What do you think? There's a good scene happening in Queensland at the moment. There is at the moment. Yeah. What kind of scene uh, are you are you in that you like? Well, it's more the do-it-yourself approach. Right. So it's kind of a do-it-yourself gig approach yeah. and, and band approach. Okay, cool. And you, prior to coming back to Queensland, you uh, were in you, your band's been based in a, in a couple of different cities. Do you want to tell us about that? Uh, we're based in Sydney twice. And what years were that? Uh, late eighties in Sydney. All right. Um, early 90s in Sydney, like 93. Uh-huh, and Melbourne in between? Melbourne in between that, yeah. And the, um, so what did you think the difference was between Sydney in the late 80s and the early 90s? Much of a difference, maybe? Um, uh, Sydney died, for live scene, it died really quickly uh, around 90, around 1990. Is that the Pokey Palace syndrome? Probably, yeah. Um, I don't know, no one was, you know, originally when you had the Peter Shemin and I am. the Palace, the Trade Union Club, and yeah. um, it was fantastic. And you had Tex and the Black Eye crew all doing their stuff. And yeah. As a youngster, it was fucking fantastic. And they, they had the gunnery in Woolloomooloo, which is a great place. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah it died really quickly a lot of venues sort of closed and and when we were based there in 93 or 4 we only played a couple of gigs and they were you know all the old venues i think the Enendale was the only one that was still going at that time they all went all right you know. and you were playing with lubricated goat and oh we played a couple of times yeah like that was that was you know when um that was in the eight, yeah, late eighties. So after all these years, what what uh, do you think the band's sort of trying to achieve now? Is it sort of more a um, an affirmation of DIY culture? Do you see that's the role well, of the it's band? It's a direction I'd like to go in, um, and um, and just uh, yeah, I suppose that's the only way I can answer it. Yeah. Um, what about the use of electronics? Why, why, why are you interested in electronics? Well, I've always been into electronic music. Yeah. Klaus Scholzer and Throbbing Gristle and all oh, those yeah. sort of bands, you know. Um, and we've just been able to utilise it more because we've got Alex in the band that has all the technology, you know, what the youngsters are like. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess one thing about electronics is it seems to sort of bring a the possibility of saying something uh, about contemporary life into music. Do you think that that's one of your aims to think or, or communicate ideas about life in the uh, first decade of the 21st century or the second decade now? That's a good point. Maybe, yeah, right. And what, what, what kind of other ideas? I mean, I, when I listen to your music, it seems very um, positive. Like, it, it, it seems to... Sometimes it seems to be uh, that it takes... Um, ideas or feelings that people sort of have but don't articulate and articulates them in a way which suggests that they're um, uh, can be used to be creative and be used to um, set up forms of communication which maybe can provide insights into how we live. A lot live. of the songs to be true, a lot of the lyrics um, the music could be done first and then half the time I wouldn't even have lyrics and I would like just it would whatever popped into my head there seems to be a lot some, of lyric yeah yeah and that's how I, some some like we'd play a song live and i wouldn't even have lyrics that i'd written but and it works sometimes and you know i mean that's that subconscious sort of thing yeah like, that's like the surrealist the yeah right you know? um but i mean there seems to nevertheless be sort of lyrical themes like um, for instance, kind of, you know, the hidden kind of excitement of suburban life, you know, like the neighbours, if you listen, you can hear the neighbours kissing or, you know, these sort of interactions well, with the, the dead in your own house and stuff like that. I mean... Um, it's probably, you know, like, yeah, the, you know, the environment you've grown up in and the suburb, like you said, you know, I lived in Townsville 
I am. Very much a suburban environment, you know. And that whole, you know, what are the neighbours doing next door? How come you don't hear yeah. them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. So, but I mean, do you think that's one of the roles that sort of DIY creativity can do? Like mine, the kind of everyday suburban life, which often tends to fall off the radar in terms of sort of, you know, um, uh, people's idea of of uh, what's aesthetically important or what's philosophically important and maybe mine that for the kind of insights or um, ideas which uh, which can give people a way of maybe thinking more proactively about their historical situation? Um, one word answer, yes. Right, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just... Uh... <laughs> okay, oh, that's cool. Um, and, and so, I mean, is there a shift, do you think, have you, have you, have you shifted from the, I mean, like some, something like Lubricated Goat, it's very kind of like, it's, it's, it's hilarious, you know, it's got this real dark humour about, you know, he had a schedule for a stroke at 82 yeah. and ha ha ha, no one bothered to turn his life support system off, ha ha. It's grotesque uh, in a way It's well. a grotesque, yeah, and that's, it kind of reminds me too of like, you know, um, you know, the birthday party, things like that, sort of that grotesque, yeah. absurd, dark absurdism. I mean, you seem more interested in, um... It may be light, the lighter aspects of life or something. I think that's, um, especially with newer songs and you get older and you, you know, you know, when you're younger, it's the whole teenage angst type of... Right. That's how what I found. And then when you get older, you, you're not scared of writing songs about positive things or something, you know? Yeah, and right. A lot of it, as I said, is what comes into my head. And then some, I might like have a song and then... Um, if I, I'll have a line and then it'll just go from there, like you know. But it's something that I've just sort of thought up on the spot where we're actually playing the music, you know. So, it's so a lot of, of it's, as I said, it's subconscious, I think. But maybe it reflects your kind of immediate re reactions to, you know, the limits and the possibilities of your. I don't know. I look at a lot of the old stuff and you know, I look at some of them, and a lot of them seem to. You're yeah, not all of them, but early ones, a lot of them about drugs as well. I wasn't even aware of it. Yeah, it seemed like some of that stuff sort of reminded me of kind of like stoned thoughts, perhaps. But then, but then again, the very fact that you bothered to sort of articulate them, like um, nincompoops, a bit like that about the person in the cupboard who doesn't yeah. talk, right? But then the very fact that you articulate them seems to like almost transcend it. Almost gives you this like uh, ability to reflect on it or go beyond it or something. Do you think? Yeah, um, nincompoops. Um... What did you call it? <laughs> That's from a, um, that's from a nightmare nightmare I had. That's from a night, oh, no. from a nightmare I had about my, uh, my father living in the cupboard. Oh, you're old and man, scared, eh? Yeah, and I was scared of walking by it. Oh, okay. Ha ha, it's a kind of an eatable thing. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's what you do. You, you sort of use these suppressed or unusual thoughts and you, I mean, at the very least you can make light of them. I mean, and maybe... Even though I do love my dad, let me say. Yeah, we all... <laughs> We all love and hate our fathers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what they're there for. My daughter loves and hates me. It's cool. Um, yeah. So I mean, maybe yeah, you can make light of them, and and by bringing them to light, you make light of them. But also, you 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 put them up there for consideration. And um, okay, so that's sort of. And what what other what do you consider the future directions of the band? Um, what musically or lyrically? Or Both. Like, musically, I'd like to. Uh, yeah, explore more electronic yeah. and stuff. But both, though. I like both. I like experimental, but I like bands as well. <laughs> oh, my Cool. I'm being interviewed. Yeah. All right, well, um, okay, thank you very much, Didn't Mark. even react. Good night. God Good. bless. Who's <laughs> <laughs> stopping? <laughs> oh, Tips has found the bonnet. Are you guys sick of me, actually?